That's definitely day old snow right there. Crumbles apart. All right, Reynolds. Yes, day indeed. Day old snow. See you later, Jen. Not the same. All right. Yeah, thank you for that. Even the roads look good, too, in that area. Now, we do have another chance of some snow coming in across the northern tier. Heads into parts of the northeast. Um, probably not Hartford this time, but I'm going to show you how it plays out. Just starting with why we need it so much. This is Minnesota, and you see how far below average we are. Where is the winter is what the headline is here. In Minneapolis, in particular, we've only had 7.3 inches of snow this whole season so far that's 26 inches below average and we've gone 59 days without any snow a zero inch snow depth here not quite a record the record is 75 but boy here it has been a weird winter to say the least now we bring in some snow chances come later today it's mild enough that we start as rain look at this we're 41 degrees this afternoon so when it begins it's likely to begin as rain and then we'll mix in some snowflakes the struggle is real in the atmosphere out here changing over to snow by the time we get into this evening that's about nine o'clock or so. But look, it's a quick mover. You know, it's not going to tap into moisture from the Gulf or the Atlantic. So it's a classic kind of Midwestern storm that doesn't have a ton of moisture with it and will move quickly through and really not have the opportunity to drop a ton of snow. But where it's cold enough, we will get some. So we've got a stripe across Minnesota, Wisconsin, over here into Michigan. We'll get that chance of maybe a little bit more over into Western New York. Northern New York, too, is where we'll get a little more accumulation and elevation will matter as always. Now, right now, a little help from the lakes, a little lake enhancement happening here. Finger Lake snow actually around Binghamton, New York, that's uh, flying around your sky, making you look and feel very wintry out there. But what we're watching is this new system coming in where the snow has been coming down in South Dakota and actually falling at a pretty fast clip at about an inch per hour. That's the kind that will coat roads, make it tough for travel here, even if temperatures aren't super, super cold. They're cold enough to get the snow. And of course, when the snow falls at a rate like this, they're cold enough. it's cold enough to cover the road ways. So we're watching winter weather advisories mainly. There's a couple winter storm warnings. This storm has not gotten a name in case you're wondering because it doesn't affect in a population with winter storm warnings. So we have very strict criteria for that. But we watch this come through and, and look because we haven't seen a lot here. Just want to make sure that you know and ready for this to come in Green Bay, Milwaukee. You're kind of on the edge. Chicago, um, it's going to be rain. Uh, Detroit, same deal probably for you as well. Buffalo should get a little bit of snow and then Burlington, another city where we haven't had much snow snow this winter. We do have some snow coming our way. Again, most spots about one to three. I had to show you this for Burlington, where for the first time on record, we've had no measurable snow on the ground February 1st through the 12th. We do have snow chances coming in for you tomorrow night, Greg. Well, Jen, you're so right. Between late January and a chance at least yeah. to, to rectify the situation. Yeah. I mean, right? You can't just he, look. Winter's going to have to come back and just give it another chance. Old man, he'll, he'll deliver. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said mine was a keeper today because the sunshine. I mean, I know it was yeah. chilly this morning, but the sun is going to make it all better. It is. This yeah. is gorgeous stuff. This I mean, is not just, this is not a keep dating. This is put the ring on it kind of weather. <laughs> it is. Really? Absolutely. You heard it from Alex Wallace. It's <laughs> yeah. a little chilly in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. This is good for Alex. <laughs> well, coming up also on the show, we are continuing to celebrate Black History Month. We're uh, here on the Weather Channel. Yep. Today, we actually introduce you to the next face of change, uh, making history right now in the fields of science, climate, and environment. <laughs> yeah. It's coming your it's way. It's coming to an end. All right. Uh, love it. Love it. Keep voting in the poll. Keep the comments coming as well. If you have any pictures, we, of course, love to see that, too. Well, you know, people in uh, northeastern Brazil, again, some good news, keeping that drought at bay uh, for us here along the West Coast. Uh, since the beginning of the year, it's not just San Francisco dealing with the surpluses. Mm -hmm. I mean, Crescent City, a surplus approaching a foot down in L.A. and San Diego, both of those spots also running rainfall surpluses. Last week, L.A., at least the downtown um, location reporting location was the rainiest of all the big cities as right. so far for the year, which is a wild stat to be right in Los Angeles. Now, as we look at how much is to come this week, we've got another storm coming in. Rainfall heaviest northern and central California, another three to five or five to eight inches and the snow too. Yes. And that was the problem earlier in the winter, right? We weren't getting the snow. Not changing a bit here yeah. over the last bit. So here's sort of the setup here for us as we work our way through the day. A few more systems to track with the moisture coming out of the Pacific. That'll drive its way on in here. We've got one that'll impact us here as we head into the weekend. So we will see that rain again coming in heavy at times thanks to this atmospheric river event. Um, the snow will add up in the higher elevations here. This is another Pacific storm though with 
more tropical origins. So you, you need the storms to come down from the Gulf of Alaska to really yeah, get those yeah, snow yeah, levels yeah. to drop. Haven't seen too many of those no, this winter, haven't. that's for sure. So heads up, with the rain coming on through this weekend, there is going to be the possibility we have to watch out for for some flash flooding. All right, so we time it out for you starting today. Rain out there in northern California into Oregon. Uh, that on Thursday, everything kind of presses in. We'll get some of the moisture all the way over into Idaho, Montana, back into Utah too. But there's another one waiting in the wings. And here it comes, just in time for our weekend. Saturday to Saturday night. Then another batch comes in for Sunday into Monday. So rounds, mm -hmm. rounds, and more rounds of the rain. That one goes all the way down the coast into Los Angeles and San Diego with more rain for you down there into Southern California. Now here's a look at where we have the winter concerns, winter weather advisory, most predominant. That's in the lighter color. Winter storm warnings in place, but mainly up into higher elevations. You know, I'm, I'm really interested in the Cascades in Washington. Like and how they, they've been they doing? They have not had a lot of warnings this year. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just weird right this it's been a weird it's been a weirdly stormy winter in the west but in terms of what they've gotten in different right. areas it's been just kind of out of place it's been mild yeah. well you can stay on top of threats to your day in the light well, actually a lot of folks in the south this year i know we're hoping like oh are we gonna get some snow in the south well uh new orleans here uh, that's hard to do anyway and especially not this year we've got more rain and mild temperatures we're going to be in the 60s through the rest of the week and friday look at that 67 rain comes in friday night and saturday this is a weekend and where a lot of people are thinking, oh, I might try to squeeze in a quick getaway, get somewhere warm, right? Get some of the sunshine. Um, and we've got a lot of sunshine. You see that today all across the south. Um, temperatures in Miami and Tampa, they're going to be in the mid 70s. Really a very nice day. But the timing, unfortunately, is that the rain comes back in for the weekend. So we pick it up on Friday. Showers come back into South Texas. Uh, it's President's Day on Monday, right? So for a lot of you, you might have a long weekend. Well, Friday night, we've got rain coming in. A little bit of a break on Saturday, Atlanta, Birmingham, Montgomery. We can see it's down into Florida, so around Clearwater and Jacksonville. We've got some rain coming in. It may be heavy at times. They're probably pretty light, the stuff that we see to the north in Tennessee and into uh, to Mississippi. But in South Texas, we've got areas of two to three inches of rain. And in Central Florida and South Florida, we've got one to two inches of rain coming our way. Repeated rounds, plus the potential for some of it to be heavy at times. Saturday to Sunday, the focus area is going to be Jacksonville down to Orlando, maybe Tampa, Sarasota, Clearwater area. So this is where you're going to watch for perhaps some flash flooding. Sunday to Monday, now we bring it down to Southeast Florida, including around West Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale, um, Lauderdale by the sea. You may see some rain showers here. So any of your events outside, you're going to have to watch the rain for that. Uh, I'll time it out for you. Rain comes in across the Panhandle Friday into Saturday. Saturday morning, rain is now, or rain chances are now coming into Tampa and Orlando. And then by Sunday morning, you can see how it's covering pretty much the whole peninsula with that chance of rain. This is in the morning through the afternoon. It's still South Florida, at least Southeast Florida, that's going to hang on to it even until Monday. But hey, at least the temperatures will be warmer, right? It is Wednesday, and you know what that tune, and that means on Wednesday, the new episode of the Weather Geeks podcast drops today, and this week we're talking billion-dollar disasters. Yeah, 2023 set the record for the most billion-dollar disasters in the U.S. in one calendar year. Now, in all, there were $28 billion disasters ranging from hurricanes to severe weather and drought. Well, this week's guest is the lead scientist for the National Centers for Environmental Information, Billion Dollar Weather and Climate Disasters Analysis, Adam Smith. He says we can learn a lot by examining each individual event. You know, interesting, just looking back at last year, and we had a record number of billion dollar disasters, and you can see them lined up here by category. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's only one winter and it was actually cold. It wasn't even snow that made the list. It was that cold wow. event that came in after Groundhog Day last year and in the, the Northeast. That was the only one. And that one actually didn't even last that long. It that didn't. event was a short hitter, you know, quick hitter. But it's amazing how you break it out and you see that severe storms tops the list. I mean, it's not even close. Right. It is not even close. Yeah. So when you look at this, you start saying, okay, this is how we should prepare for it. This is what we should be building for is severe storm storms. Yeah. I mean, right. yes, you want to watch out for everything else, but if you want to focus in on one thing, and that's where you kind of pull all of your resources towards, yeah. it's trying to figure out how can we build to resist issues from severe storms. And this is something they talk about in the podcast, which is, well, when you do these analyses, you can, you can kind of see what, what bubbles up. I mean, it's severe storms, it's flooding. You know, mm -hmm. Last year we had four flooding events. Um, it's 
it's drought, it's uh, tropical events. I mean, those are the ones that really end up costing a lot of money. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, too, with winter. I did go back and look at the full stats going back to 1980 when we first captured this. There was only 22 winter events that made the billion dollar list. It's only like five or six percent of the whole whole up uh, the, the whole of it. I mean, Which it is interesting. It, it makes a bit of sense. They had winter storm Lorraine mm -hmm. and, you know, it dropped snow from, well, it started in Colorado, New Mexico, but Southern Plains and to the Northeast. And it was very impactful for a day. A lot of you, some of the totals were big. We picked up more than 15 inches in the top spots, like in Farmington, Connecticut. One of the interesting uh, aspects of this storm was how the forecast changed again, right as the snow started falling. So there was a lot mm -hmm. of forecast bobbing and weaving in the final hours leading up to the event. It was pretty interesting that way. But it was a solid forecast. And Greg, you were talking about using the ensembles, the European mm -hmm. ensemble, to kind of get mm -hmm. that track nailed down in the days ahead. And I think that's important because it helps people plan, right? I mean, look at all the schools that mm -hmm. closed the day before and um, allowed, you know, parents to get their kids, yeah, and, yeah, you yeah. know, care for them, et cetera, here. I think it helps. Yeah, it does help. And unfortunately, this event didn't really help out a lot in that way because things that really at the last minute had a lot of uncertainty to deal with. But, you know, it is nor'easter season. It is nor'easter mm -hmm. season. Yes, we talk about that a lot here. And you know, sometimes we get lulled into thinking, oh, that's just like a January, February thing. March can be a oh, month. Yeah. One of the most notorious, the one that got me into weather was, of course, the blizzard of 93, which yes, was in March. Storm. Yeah, there's a lot of interest in meteorology. Well, you can catch new episodes of... You listened. For yesterday's question of the day, we asked you for your pictures of the winter weather. And we got tons of pictures, no doubt. All right, thanks, Dr. Postel. Well, you know, for yesterday's question of the day, we asked for your pictures of the winter weather. Yes, we got tons of pictures, so we had to share a few more. Appreciate of the winter weather. And we got tons of pictures, and we had to share a few more today. Love them. Morning hours, and also get you ready for the big events in your neighborhood. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. Yeah, and whether you love it or you hate it, more snow is coming to the northern tier, and our next blast of snow is right now taking shape over Miller, South Dakota. How about that? Snow in South Dakota mm -hmm. in February. Shocker. <laughs> well, I mean, this it winter, it kind of is. Yeah. I'm looking at this picture, though, and there's like tiny little flakes. They're probably like the needles, you know. Uh, stinging snow. The stinging snow. And just comparing that to the snow we had yesterday, and we, everyone was so enamored with it on social media, our reporters out there. It was the big flakes. It was so beautiful. It's not the same as these tiny little needle snowflakes. <laughs> yeah, different production, I guess, in the microphysics of the clouds. Yes, yeah. We're getting a different whole set of uh, components in the cloud layer. But mm -hmm. you know what? Uh, it's accumulating. Feeling. That's all. Yes, <laughs> it absolutely does. Well, you know, the word of the day in today's big. Those totals. Now, mm -hmm. first the Northeast racing to dig out before those next chances of snow. Yeah, and, you know, thousands of people are still without power across the region. So there's that, which is uncomfortable when it's cold and mm -hmm. snowy. Oh, for sure. And meteorologist Reynolds Wolf is in Hartford, where more than 10 inches of snow fell yesterday.